Oh, wow. You have to educate your children on the world as it exists. Today's all about Mexican street corn. Probably one of the most popular corn dishes. I was gonna grill these guys, but I've been watching uh, YouTube videos from actual like Mexican street vendors serving this, and I noticed there's no grilling usually. It's steamed or boiled corn. So I'm gonna sort of do a little bit of a blend. I'm gonna do a quick cook in the microwave first, kind of loosen up the husk and the, the corn, and then I'm going to open them up, desilk it, and then roast it for a little bit in the broiler just to kind of get some color. I don't wanna grill it because I wanna show you how to do it in, in the oven in case you don't have a grill. I'm buying corn. Corn is one of those things that's um, really modified. Everything in this country has corn syrup in it, so it's, so it's one of the things we grow the most, and we grow them in these huge monocultures. Don't even grow it to be eaten by us. We grow it as feed and to make corn syrup. So I've noticed a degradation of the quality of corn, so you should be diligent with it. When you're shopping for it, you want to sort of make sure it's a moist husk. You don't want it dried out. You want this guy to be tight. Another thing you want to do is you kind of want to peek in. Make sure that co the corn kernels come up to the top of the husk. I've noticed this thing where like, I'll buy corn and I'll get it home and like, there's no corn kernels on it. I don't know if it's because of this genetic stuff or what, but I don't like it. It's sketchy and like almost probably 70% of the corns that I'll pick before I buy it will have that. And that's just a waste of money. So I'm gonna check each one to make sure I have nice corn kernels all over the place. Summertime's the best time to get it. It's the sweetest. So again, hit up a farmer's market if you wanna be the safest. Otherwise, I'm gonna try and make this as close to a actual authentic Mexican street corn, elote, whatever you wanna call it, as I can. And basically what you're gonna need is cotija cheese. It's like a Mexican feta parmesan. It's not as salty, but it crumbles. And this is the stuff that they actually use. I've got different spices. So again, I'm gonna use paprika, I'm gonna use some cayenne, I'm gonna use chili powder and sumac. It's a special ingredient. I told you about it last episode. You can leave it out, I'm gonna put it in. These all sort of have different like colors to them. So what it's gonna do is flavor and garnish it really nicely at the end with different array of reds and spices like that. We got lime. They don't really serve with cilantro, but it's got nice color and it'll make it pop, so I'm gonna add it. And then of course mayo, and I'm gonna butter it as well. So first things first, I'm gonna microwave it for three minutes. What that's gonna do is kind of loosen it all up. It's gonna allow me to get the husks out and it's gonna kind of like steam it a little bit in its husk and make sure it gets nice and plump and juicy. And then we're gonna throw it into the broiler to get color. Three minutes and it's basically 80, 90% cooked, probably all the way cooked. So now we wanna keep the green on, but remove the silk, all of this nasty stuff. that does is just sort of moistens the husks so they kind of stick together in a clump and they're just easier to remove. So then we have this mess, right? So basically what I want to do is take two of these and just wrap it up. Just kind of crisscross two of them and then you can just like French braid it. It's a little bit more uh, manageable. So now that's your handle. Take some butter. I don't know if that's authentic, but that's what I'm doing. Some salt. Just kind of want to get this shredded as fine as you can. It'll sort of just break up. You can also blend it up in a blender and get it like a little finer. That's probably a better way to do it. Um, but I'm just going to do it like this. I don't want to bust out the blender. You don't have to do that, but like it's gonna be a thousand times better because that's just how they do it. The powder is gonna sort of just dust the whole thing. The thicker the cheese is gonna be, there's gonna be gaps in it. It's gonna look incomplete. A fine powder will coat the entire corn, which is how they do it over there. 
have a lime. Get it ready in your squeezer. Because that's how they did it in Mexico. Now we're going to broil this and get some color. And then we're just about done. You don't want too much, you're just painting it so that the cheese will stick. Tad cayenne. just uh, I was taken it's just too good that's why you go directly to the source I mean I would have made this completely different had I not done the research you got good corn you have a nice little presentation here you've got the right cheese it's flavored because I seasoned it with salt and it's got butter so the corn tastes good the corn's cooked and then you've dusted it completely with cheese which is authentic and then what you've done with the spices is like you that's flavoring and seasoning it so that's where you can sort of get creative and if you get close, I don't know if you can see it, you can sort of discern the different spices, the sumac, the chili powder. It does amazing things to flavor it. This is primo. Well, I don't know what else to say. If this hasn't sold you, then I don't know what will. Save the flight to Mexico and make it at home. I got, I got it in my teeth. That's the worst part about corn. Thanks again for watching. Uh, this one was, I was really impressed with this one. Corn is one of those things that at the farmer's market, it's twice as good than anywhere else. So again, go to the farmer's market. Now you can get corn, you can get tomatoes. So thanks again for watching. Hit that like button. Give me a share across social media. Let people know what's going on over here. It mean a lot to me. Um, other than that, have a great weekend and uh, be safe. And I'll see you next time.